atheism. People made up religion. God is the star of the show. So that's gotta be made up to you. So the God that you all mean that you all believe in, that you all mean that you all believe. Make us believe. Black atheism. Black atheism. People made up religion. God is we have the correct economic system. That's Until right. we make revolution, we'll forever be slaves. We'll forever be filling the jails up. We'll forever not have schools. We'll forever be on drugs. We'll be forever doing backwards things like dying in the street. And we'll be forever burying our Elder? children like yeah. we do Trayvon, I, Martin, right. Malcolm. Can I ask y'all a question? Yes, so y'all trying to tell me that the Russians have never oppressed black people. Are you trying to tell me that communism does not go on well, in I'm Africa? Sure I'm saying, let's, let's have a discussion. Let's have a discussion. It's a discussion. We, 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 a discussion. A discussion right. means two so people talk. All right, so this let me is ask, not a discussion. Let me ask, hey, but let me ask Y'all questions. discussing okay. and starting to cut me off, but and I'm starting to get mad. Right, where, so my, what I'm asking you is, you is not going to tell me. You talking about Egyptians. I'm trying to tell you that communism goes into Africa Right and carves up Africa just like no. The no yes, no, it do. Well, China goes into okay, Africa right now okay. China, with that hey, tomfoolery. If China come to Africa, China pay for everything that's they right. get. Oh, that's bullcrap. So that's that tomfoolery. Whatever. And bomb us out. Oh, Show man. me one bomb that China wow. dropped in Africa. They don't gotta drop a bomb. Show me one bomb Russia dropped in Africa. You don't gotta drop it. So well, you as, won't. As, as, so we so support. Hold on. Let me get this point. Cause y'all been cutting me down. Yes, I got y'all though. We're Watch. We're gonna, we're gonna we got it. We don't care. Y'all, y'all, y'all gonna give me my you piece. Gotta, so you trying to tell me? I, I want to make this clear for the listening audience. Piece. For the, for the listening okay. audience, this is what I want to know here. Yeah. Are you trying to tell me that Russia is the key to African survival in this globe? Are you? What I'm saying is, China, is, that is what you're socialism saying? is the, as opposed is, is to the, the, is a solution to the world problem. Okay, and I'm socialism is a solution to the world problem. And I'm saying at this juncture, you have not studied Africa, and you don't know what you're talking about. Let me just say this, and I'm out of that. I'm saying that we will accept a no, we won't. From our friends and from those who will support us in our struggle and our liberation, China, Russia, or uh, any nation in the world that want to be our friends and want to assist us, but show nobody will show honor me. us, nobody will show take nothing from us, us. nobody will show rob me. us. Introduce my panel. What's up, panel? What's up, man? Be nice, be nice gingerbread man coming out of LA. Just here with my uncle. You know, uh, I'm happy to be here. Thank you for bringing me. Well, thank you for being here, nephew. Uh, Yang and Kruman, Sam O. Yang, the local director of uh, the Political Education Committee, Commander BBLM. Brother Unc, God killing the house, black African power, a well organized lie defeats a disorganized truth. So we're gonna make sure we organize that truth up in here. Hit them with a little bit of that voodoo. Yeah. All right, all right. Also, in the news, I wanna give a shout out to Javier Cecilia, whose son was slain by the Sinaloa cartel. Um, he's taking a bus from us. I think he'll be in Atlanta, I think, actually the day of uh, George Jackson's uh, slain, and then he's gonna head up to Washington, D.C. But basically, um, He's declaring the war on drugs as a failure. You know, um, as we know, there's, there's been numerous people being killed, not only in Mexico, but it's spilled over in Texas, California. And um, so he's, you know, going to do like a, I guess like a, uh, a gathering. He's just gathering up people from different states to, uh, just tell the government that, you know, the war on drugs is, is a failure, a complete failure. So um, people are dying. They're noticing that the demand of drugs is coming from America and the guns for the drugs is coming from America. So, I mean, these people see as clear as day that America is causing the problem of these deaths that are happening down in Mexico. So um, I wanted to touch on the topic, which is decentralized government and centralized government. Let me just give the definitions here and then we'll get right started with this. Centralized government puts all power and responsibility in the hands of one person. Decentralized government spreads the responsibility and powers, amounts, um, oh, what is that? Oh shoot, I, know, I can't read my own right, I'm sorry. <laughs> power to more people. So. You know, the past shows, we talked about socialism, 
we talked about communism, capitalism, and then we talked about, you know, I mentioned a African system. And so with all this, I'm building up. And then now we're talking about, you know, we talked about administrations of government. And so when we see the problems of incarceration, you know, people losing their homes, uh, education being low, we see the pipeline to prison because now we got schools looking just like prisons. And so now what we're trying to do with my generals here is trying to come up with a solution to the problem. And so we looked at uh, different aspects of uh, socialism. We looked at the governments. We looked at uh, <sighs> capitalism and what it produces. You know, we looked at socialism. You know, we talked about countries like, you know, China, which has sold out. They're capitalists now. We talked about Russia, who has sold out. And so, you know, um, I know there's some other countries like uh, Finland, who is still socialist. I know we've got countries like Sweden, and fin uh, Finland, Sweden, and Norway, you know, so, uh, which has a very uh, low incarceration rate, but they have a high drug rate. So, uh, Yanga. What's up, I know we talked about centralized governments earlier and decentralized governments, and I know I got a list of street organizations here just in Cali alone. You know, you got the Mexicans, you know, you got the Midget Lokes, you got the Malditos, the Villa Paz, Pasa La Rifas, you got the Longos, you got the Barrio 30 Step Street Gang, you got the Bloods, you got the Piru Comptons, you got the Central Park Bloods, you got Crenshaw Mafia, Eaglewood Family Bloods, Mob Piru. Las Santanas, Temple Street, Tres Cantas. I mean, the list goes on and on and on, you know. But basically, what we're looking at here is decentralized gang organizations. Uh, I want to touch on two things. We to touch on the first thing was like you were talking about the war on drugs and the the Mexicans, uh, as far as the Mexican cartel. Really, all it is is man. It's like what what Minister Malcolm said. It's a, a case of chickens coming home to roost. Right. You understand that they used and other people they were done after they thought they were done exploiting us as a people, after they thought they were done, after they had thought or felt that they had got everything they could from Africans or the descendants of Africa here in America, they turned to the Latinos. Mm -hmm. And so in order to create cheap labor, they opened their borders and allowed them to come over. And uh, with allowing them to come over, it became their worst nightmare because of uh, a thing the same way with this war on drugs. When they tried to stop them or destroy them, we're giving them guns and putting drugs right. over in Mexico. The thing that fortified them are is coming back to hit the powers that be. And I really will say the white supremacist, the capital system that has been established here, is that the Mexicans and other people practice a form of nationalism. That's right. So to a certain degree, they understand what's happening to their people. Even though they murder and maim one another in their little cliques or whatever, they understand in their little narrow, 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 narrow understanding of nationalism, they understand, they have taken those poisons and taken those things and have uh, turned them into to, to really institutions of money making to further their advance in the cause of their form of nationalism. What it didn't do is since they have destroyed the black man's culture and taken the black man's way, when they introduce those things, we are more susceptible to the diseases and sicknesses that come with them off of something because of like what Ankh said, our lack of cultural understanding that we start to win, and especially for me, during integration. Not only did we integrate uh, economically, but we started to integrate morally and ethically. Mm -hmm. What I mean is that we start to allow their norms to become our norms. Right. We start to allow what they accept in their culture, uh, from their uh, advancements to their perversities, we allow that to be the same thing for us and even for them to project those things on us. So much so now that even in the African American community, that homosexual, homosexuality, is, is, is more um, widely accepted than it has been ever before in our whole history. Even then, I'm only 40 and I can remember when I was coming up, I'm not saying, I'm not no romantic, I'm not sitting here saying that, thank you brother, I needed that, Emmanuel. <laughs> <laughs> Because that monitor too, catches me. Too, right? uh, uh, I'm not sitting there. I'm not sitting saying that we didn't have thing, those things to exist in our community. But what I'm saying is that we had set such a standard in our social norm and our, our level of acceptance that if certain things went on that went against the grain of our culture, that they had to be uh, buried, basically. You had to, so I want to say that. So I want to say that anytime we look to the Mexican, those are my Latino brothers, no disrespect to them, but anytime we study them from their systems to anything they have, we have to see, use it as a comparative study of how can we as black people, African nationalists, build and learn from that. 
Right now, it's just a case of chickens coming home to roost. The white boys are facing their worst enemy, and they armed and, and did that to them. Uh, as far as, and I'm going to be brief, centralized and decentralized government. Well, just let him go ahead. Yeah, yeah, centralized and decentralized, decentralized government. We understand that as far as centralized government, that in some form that we have tried that as African people. Right. We've tried it subconsciously. We didn't know we were trying it. We tried it with the church. Every institution we get or every liberation race movement we get, we make that the premier uh, movement. We make that person, that leader, the premier leader, putting all responsibilities and powers in that particular form from the uh, SCLC to the NAACP to the Black Panthers, anything. So we never have tried really, to my understanding, outside of what uh, 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 brother, brother Malcolm, Minister Malcolm did when he came up with the African American, the organization of African American Unity, to try to galvanize mm -hmm. all of our uh, respective uh, organizations to form some type, you know, to form that unity, that movement, that coalition. Anytime we have one man leadership, one man government ship, or get in, fall into following some type of messiah, we always run the risk and stand the risk of them knocking the lead off and the body dying. We, history is replete with examples. So, you know, definitely the only way to go. And, and what's sad about it, us as the so-called leaders don't recognize, and I noticed you were reading the street tribes off, yeah, that, that our youth, that our young people, and not even just the young people, but that the street tribe, the urban movement, has developed such a mindset and such a cultural movement that they recognize there's no future or there's no fruition of power in a, in a centralized government or a centralized structure. That's right. Well, you are a cultural you know, expert. You want to get in on some of this? Man, I'm just, you know, I'm fighting. I'm fighting to be African. You know right. what I'm saying? That's I'm right. nowhere near close to being African because if I was totally African, we'd be undefeated right now. Uh, traditional African system, when practiced the right way, has never been defeated. It's an organized system. When we call it voodoo, see, that's the only word that we know for sure on this panel is black. Voodoo. Plain and simple, cut and dry. You can't say the Asiatic black man is voodoo. Nope. Can't say the Chinese pact, no. We can say communism, right? Dictatorship, white. You know, I argue with y'all about that. Mm -hmm. uh, capitalism, that's white. Maybe kind of sorted some African. When I say voodoo, everybody know. Them ninjas know, right? <laughs> that we talking about black science, right? And so, Louis Farrakhan, not understanding black science, he instituted a homosexual ritual around African symbols that he did not understand. So let's come to e Egypt on the Potomac. Okay. I don't know what camera I'm supposed to be putting this in. Okay? Now, on the back of this, this is a phallus or a penis. And so the crazy Ismailized uh, Minister Farrakhan took a million black men to circle around a penis. It's called penis worship. That's a symbology of homosexuality because he did not understand his African signs and symbols. Okay? The Ben Ben or the Tekken. Okay, was produced by African women because they worshiped the penis. They gave rise to the penis. You know, in the morning time when you wake up, raw hit in the morning, up goes the penis. So you should have never had a million men, right, on Washington, D.C., circling around a Ben Ben or Tekken or Oblis. That's called a misunderstanding of African symbols. You should have had a million women there and children and men. The women around the Oblis, right, because when women around Oblis, what happens? Babies come. When, when babies come, family is needed. Male and female family. What's the question you're at? Because I'm rocking right so now. What's the, what's the, so what's the outcome of having men? Because <clears throat> me personally, I thought it was a tremendous event. You thought what? it was? Here's the yeah, question. What, Where's the money? money? Where'd the money go? With this tremendous event, where did the money go to help these brothers now, out? I, money, yeah, oh, I, didn't, I didn't think. Now, I'm going to tell you this. Where did the money go? Oh, that's what I'm saying. I, don't, I, have, I, have no idea the, I have no idea where the money went. See, so, what what, see? so we had a million ninjas there, right? Right. And nobody know where the money went. It, it is. I don't think, not only, I said I think it was a tre tremendous event. I don't know about the programs, the outcomes of it, but the whole spirit, the whole energy of right. having was two a million waste, men. Was a, was a crazy that, waste of money. We spent gas, hotels. We pumped up the European economy on that. And it did nothing, right, to help us and these young brothers right here. Only the Muslims flourished from that nation. Remember, you couldn't even sell no water at the event if you wasn't Muslim. If you came with the black African thing, they was like, yo, you can't sell that water there. I know. Mm -hmm. Okay? And so my point is, it was a misunderstanding of African culture, and now you wonder why a million men, rap right, ain't fighting against homosexuality. Because they did a homosexual ritual right there. Since when do men raise the penis? 
The women in a vagina raises the penis, okay? So we misrepresented African culture. That's my point. So talk about government, right? Until we recognize what voodoo is and what it ain't. Voodoo, quantum physics, okay? Now, I challenge anybody, right? All major systems in the world, whether it's government, mm -hmm. uh, religion, Islam, Christianity, Judaism, Voodoo, all of them take fragments from the peripheral of Voodoo. Let me give you a definition of an African when I'm talking about Voodoo. I'm simply talking about the creative forces in nature. How you observe nature and out of nature, how you develop ideas and concepts is simply Voodoo. Now, by the time you come to black people that go to Africa for a month and come back over here, Right? And how about voodoo? That's called spookism. Mm. Okay? You cannot light a candle and change the oppression on your butt. You feel me? You cannot do a slaughter or a ritual which you think misunderstanding and think that's going to change anything. Because for you to be a voodoo priest, see, a voodoo priest, equivalent of a voodoo priest in European science would be a scientist or a doctor with a doctorate degree. That's equivalent. We talked about the difference between an African priest, right? who had cosmology, math, science, reading, writing, you know what I'm saying, botany, mm -hmm. all right, Pharma, pharmaceutical. How about the four pharmaceutical programs? How much do European medicine make every year? Anybody know? Billions of dollars. They make billions of dollars off a fragment of your voodoo system because voodoo consists of what? Medicine, meaning botany plants, <laughs> the study of plants and medicine and healing. And so they go to all indigenous nations, right, specifically Africa, and they take from them their plant life, their botany, and they take bits and pieces of it and put it in their medicine. Like, they give you something to cure a headache, but give you a heart attack. You know how you read underneath of it? Mm -hmm. Take the aspirin and stop the headache, but it'll kill you later on. So they make millions of dollars off a little teeny piece of what voodoo was. See, voodoo is not spookism. Voodoo is the science of living. It's the science of understanding. Now, we close it up. How did the Haitians defeat Napoleon? Napoleon Bonaparte, right, he had the meanest European army in the world at the time. Am I not right or wrong? Right. Totally mechanized. So my question is, how did Bookman, Desole, Tufon Overture, right, Christophe, right, and the priestess, Dele, she was a priestess, enacted the African ideas, the African gods, right? And around that principle of voodoo, did they not defeat the total mechanized army of the French, yes or no? Defeated them. So give me the last time, right, an African people defeated a European nation in modern times. Do we have one? Actually, well, let, let me ask Yang this question because it'll, it'll go inside of what you're saying. Let me, let me read some of the rest of these tribes here because these are tribes that the government, United States government, is recruiting into their system and also the police force. Flipside Tresse, uh, Flip Town Mob, White Dragons, the, and these are the Asian gangs, um, Red Doors, the Wachings, Suicide Town. This is the Crips. You got the Eight Trays, uh, Gangster Crips. You got Grape Street. You got Gangster Hoover, Fudge Town Mafia, and Rolling Forties. So Yanga, um, I don't just mention about going in European nations. I remember Bosnia and Herzegovina. They were uh, recruiting brothers just like you and me, mm -hmm. you know, just like <laughs> you and me, because they 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 went towards the street gangs, and all these these gangs are listed that they started recruiting, not only like in the military, yeah. but in the police force. I don't, you know, for and I had to use, I don't like, I think that that's criminalization and uh, dehumanization of our young men when we use the term gangs, because really okay. high definition television has defied, you know what I'm saying, <laughs> has, defied, uh, has, def yeah, has defied our image. And, and one wow. of the things that uh, I work when I teach the young man is really cool Jacqueline, self-determination and, and self uh, to defy yourself. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying, you can't let anyone defy you. I want to go back to like what touch on briefly what Ankh was saying about uh, the Voodoo and helping the Haitian and the Haitian revolt, the Haitian rebellion to eventually defeat Napoleon's army. Right. I agree that it was Voodoo that did it, but was it? Uh, to me, my question is: It was it the uh, so-called spiritual aspect, or was it a psychological aspect? We see the same yeah. thing. Yeah. We see the same thing when we see. Um, uh, so-called suicide bombers right. or extreme right. Islamists. Right. Is right. it a law that gives them the power to do this thing or is it the mind manipulation and the behavior modification of the so-called teachers and rulers that teach them a perverse, if it's perverse or whatever, a perverse understanding of Islam that makes them go out and think that sacrifices or you know what I'm saying, accepted from God. Good the question, same thing, the same thing in, and, and I'm gonna be in the same thing in Voodoo. When we study from coming from a 
revolutionary in the strategic position, I can see how strategically mm -hmm. the voodoo played a role in that. First of all, they allowed them to have their celebrations. Mm -hmm. Through their celebrations, they communicated. Through the right. drums, they communicate. They were making strategies. It wasn't the great right. voodoo god didn't come down and you know what I'm saying, start smiting the heads for them. They actually had to do that. Mm. But they were going, you know, they were doing the strategy. Their dancers told a story. The drums told a story. They knew when to strike, you know, because one of the things they didn't do in Hades is they didn't take their culture. They allowed them to practice that voodoo. Ooh. And that was one of that. That was one of the enemy's biggest mistake. And America and the other countries Not learned no from that. Not no more. They don't let you practice. No, nah, because they right exactly because they learn from that. Because the cycle of having your culture, the psycholo the psychological benefits of a people having their culture is they would rather die than be dehumanized, to be less than what they are. Because like you said, it's a cut from the ancestry. It's a cut from everything we know. You find it in us, even in our street tribes. A lot of times a day, a lot of brothers ain't Christians. But right. when you talk about Christianity, you're not talking about the Bible. You're not talking about Christ. You're talking mm -hmm. about Big Mama. Mm -hmm. And that's a whole different thing. Wait a minute. My grandma been Christian forever. She eat pork. She do all that good shit. She a good, good stuff and she a good lady. You know what I'm saying? So we have to be, you know, our whole thing is we have to understand we coming from, is it a spiritual thing that we're attacking? Is it the spiritual benefit or is it psychological? Let me ask you that. Psychological. Well, let me ask you a question real quick because I know, and I want to go back to Desleen. You know, they called him Desleen the Terrible. But he's, mm. I remember he said I want 10 volunteers who are ready to die tonight. Now, with that being said, let me ask my nephew one quick question. I'm going to get you, um, you got people like, uh, I forgot the white boy's name, but you got all these white boys just shooting up people, you know, uh -huh. going in theaters, and uh -huh. you got a killing slang in Texas, you know, you got uh, concubine, we can go down the list. And like Uncle was saying, you know, like, you know, like both Young and Angie, you guys are making good, great points, you know what I'm saying? Because I remember, like you said, Desling was like, I need some people ready to die tonight. Mm -hmm. And those soldiers, when they went out to battle, it was like they were, they considered it all right there, so there was no fear. So, like, just like in jihad. Mm -hmm. So, are the white boys, you know, with the white supremacist groups, are they following that same line? I want everybody to touch on that because now we're seeing homeboy go up in the, you know what I'm saying, fearless. Mm -hmm. Fearless. So, I mean, you know, what, what, what's your take on that now? Um, you know, get over to young, you know. I think, honestly, I, I think, uh, I think all different cultures um, follow different lines. Mm -hmm. um, I think white people, you know, they, they follow, they stick together and they follow a, a, a certain um, way that's not as violent throughout physically, but mentally, you know? Mm -hmm. they, they capture you mentally, you okay. know? Um, black people, we're more of physical people. You know, Asian people, they're more of mentally people. And um, Mexican people are more like hard workers, but um, as I see it, is 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 that you know, um, you know, to come together, not only do we have to be physically, but we have to be mentally involved as well. Okay, okay. Now, uh, hold, uh, I reject those ideas you threw out there, young brother. I do, because African people, we make up the whole gantry. You know what I'm saying? you know, mental, physical, socially, spiritual. When I say spiritual, I'm simply talking about energy. Energy cannot be created nor destroyed. And so when I talked about the Vodun system, I was talking about the energy needed to produce thoughts and ideas, the energy needed to produce weapons, the energy needed to produce that testosterone that makes you want to just go, 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 go. That's the energy. It has nothing to do with spookism. And so let me introduce to you Orisha. Okay? Black God, see? See, we need to understand what a black God is. Let's deal with Oshun. It's a female did. Here's a picture of her. I want y'all to see this African goddess right here. Y'all get that. Get that into your consciousness. And let's see what she represents. Because you young brothers, we was talking about that. What our whole thing got to be built off of is economics. Mm -hmm. Okay? And so when we talk about Oshun, we talk about, right, Oshun is the feminine master of strategy. So right there, whenever you hear Oshun's name, you're supposed to start thinking about your strategy. And think about the best strategies to have to attack that enemy out of Haiti. You feel me? Now watch this, okay? One of the sayings by Oshun is, the saying goes, right, if you chump yourself, Oshun will too. Mm. Ooh. Meaning if you're not a real black man, a real black ninja, right, mm. black woman will disrespect you. Mm. We have a lot. You got a lot of black men saying, I'm going to deal with that white woman. Because a black woman challenge you. Because she give you the spirit of Oshun. Right? You, you acting like a chump, black man. You letting that white man come and do what he want to do, and you're not standing up against him. Go into an Italian neighborhood and snatch one of their women. Right. Feel me? 
We do not have the spirit of Oshun. Now, hold on. The last thing which she represents is, watch this. Why says Oshun is credited with bringing money to the world. So black people, for any white people who exist, we got a force in nature that deals with economics, that deals with money. So this woman, right, she sits at the head of the marketplace, the gross national product. So that's black culture. So within your voodoo, right, you have your, your money, your economics, your ability to wage war against people because it takes economics, mm -hmm. your ability to have far-flung trade routes come from Africa. Mm -hmm. Okay, so African culture, if you're broke, you're not practicing African culture. Mm -hmm. Okay? Okay, well, let me ask you a question because I made up a great point about, you know, the real black man. You know, you have black women challenging black men, you know. Mm -hmm. My thing is, when would the black man and black women going to challenge the government? Wow. I, it, that's deep. <laughs> Uh, two things I wanted to, yeah, two things I want to touch mm -hmm. on, and, and one of the things is, like you were saying, the question you asked when we was talking about Islam, uh, Islamic extremists yeah. and different various extremists. Uh, absolutely, that when we ask, is our Caucasian counterpart, our European counterparts, extreme like that? Absolutely. We just have to understand what their religion is, and their religion is fascism. That's right. Their religion is the is the United States. Their religion is are the are the uh, so-called understanding of democracy from a uh, United States from an imperialistic put understanding which is the United States because this is why they go into services and slap on their religious emblem which is a red mm -hmm. white and blue flag and go in and and willing to, and their conscience is clear for kill for taking human life this is how they clear their conscience so it becomes their it becomes their religion that's one thing that's what clears their conscience secondly what gives them the motive or the incentive or the drive to fight it is a white supremacist cultural structure that has been that's put right. in place we just don't call it that anymore but it's a capitalistic democracy that's what it is capitalism was built off the backs of slavery. Right. There is no way to justify the crimes that have been committed to a people and the continuous uh, uh, oppression of a people and the trickery of a people. Look at this, 13th Amendment gave the Africans, or uh, the descendants of Africans over here in America, alleged freedom. Mm -hmm. They come Crazy. back, right? Crazy. Crazy. They come back two mm -hmm. years later, I think it's about two years later, with the 14th Amendment that says, <laughs> you're a citizen. Right. Okay, wait a minute. If I'm free, the very act of me being free should give me the right to choose whether I want to be a citizen, mm -hmm. whether I want my own land here, right. or whether I want to go back to the land of my birth or the land of my ancestry or my uh, ancestral origin. Right. I was never given that opportunity, but they had to do that because in the 13th Amendment, it gave us freedom except for, except for uh, those convicted of a crime. That's right. But if you free me and I, de and I decide not to be a part of your government, what you call crime, I may not call crime. Right. You see what I'm saying? So I'm not accountable to your court system. So you have to turn around and then force me to be a citizen. So a lot of us of Africans over here, we have to understand that you were never given the choice okay. to accept citizenship. You were never given the choice if you wanted to deny it and establish your own thing or if you wanted to go back to the land of your ancestral origin. So when you find the Europeans fighting as hard as they fight and for this so-called democracy or land of the free and home of the brave, they're fighting to maintain. Home of the brave. Home of the brave. <laughs> they're right. fighting to maintain that white supremacist power right. structure Basically that is in place. Mm -hmm. That's that's the first thing. Secondly, I wanted to address what the brother said, and I'm, I'm with Aunt, that that's part of the uh, European indoctrination on us to make us think that Asians are the mental, and mm -hmm. white people are right. mental, and this and that. But Europeans are warmongers. Right. You know what I'm saying? And they and, and their history bears witness to this to this very fact. One of our problems is, to me, in my opinion, as African people, we haven't been violent enough. Ooh, dang it. Well, hey, hey. And, hey. What, I, and what I mean, not, not, not okay. violent, not, I'm not advocating violence. I'm not advocating right, violence. Right, right, I'm right. not giving a call to violence. Yanga doesn't advocate that, but Yanga is a big proponent and advocate of defending oneself. Right. How many times? How many times are our communities going to be raped, robbed, right. or are our people going to be murdered and maimed while we sit back and light candles in a vigil after the fact a bunch of reactionaries? That has to be, it's like my brother Ankh said, if you go through Italian communities, anybody communities, and snatch their people off the land, there's going to be some type of reaction. I don't That's know right. what that reaction may be, but there's going to be some type of consequence to an action that you put forth against their people. African people have to start practicing nationalism, not just in our social, not just in our economic, and not just in our political but development, but also in our defense. What's the bind, though? What, what, what ties it together? It's the voodoo, okay? Because the voodoo is the response, right? Mm -hmm. If everybody's standing and pissing the river, mm -hmm. right? By the time the water goes downstream and you go to drink it again, what happened? It, it's gonna be... But see, I'm going to tell you my problem. Here's my thing with that, and especially into an understanding. You understand what I'm trying to tell I you? I do understand that. It's a response from the river. But one of our problems Water is, gets polluted. You, you get that? Right. It does. And so if you get smacked in the face and you don't respond, 
you're, 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 not, you're not practicing nature, mm -hmm. right? Because if you chop all the trees down like in Europe, you get a lot of mudslides like what happened in Haiti. They chopped down and they lumbered all the trees away, and so when the storm come, all the mudslides go. That's a reaction from nature, responding back to you being crazy. Mm -hmm. Global warming. Right? A response to Europeans not understanding where they live at and not right. recognize. Now everybody won't go green. Well, voodoo is going green. But, uh, what, but my, my question is this, because, I mean, you know, naturally as African people, like you said, you know, we go green. And, you know, uh, and my, my question is, because, you know, you talk about pissing down the river. Monsanto's pissing down the river every day. So how do we mm. use Doom to go against big corporations? Because, I mean, what you're saying is true. But I'm looking at the 1%. The one percent that controls the corporations, the weapons manufacturers. I'm, I'm looking at them, Hunk, and I'm like, you know. Very interesting. But black. But very just like, but I'm, I'm glad you said it because they, uh, Desiline, Bookman, and all they they looked at Napoleon as a great force. So how do we get back on track on you know? You, you, I mean, it, it, you know, even when you mention nationalism, you're talking about voodoo. You, you know what I'm saying? Everything is bind together by that natural energy a natural energy to survive and want to do better. So the question is, what culture have we accepted, right, that does not make us rise up against oppression? See, so we're talking about a cultural war now. And I'm glad you mentioned that, because I know some people took some shots at us, uh, Mr. Bible Speaks, so we're gonna take some, we're gonna explain <laughs> what is keeping us down on that, that mentality. Oh, see, right. that, 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 that Bible, yeah. or right. that Bible. Mm -hmm. And so let's let the Bible speak. Let's do it. Because everybody won't play, and everybody won't think that they didn't take from, from the African system of voodoo. Let's go real fast. Right there. Highlight it. Like I say it. stop, stop. I'm going to show you pictures. So we're in the book of Exodus, right? Yeah. We're going to let the Bible speak for real. Let's do it. Right. We're in the book of Exodus, this right? The real Bible <laughs> Now watch speaks. this, right? To prove to you right now that they stole from an African voodoo system. And I'm going to get with these pictures. So come on, read it slow. When yeah. I start talking, stop. I'm going to show the picture. Go ahead. And Moses wrote all the words of the Lord and rose up early in the morning and build it an altar. Stop. So he rose up early in the morning and he built the altar. This book is entitled Voodoo. Mm -hmm. First people on the planet to enact altars are the Africans. This is the altar. Okay. Give me a close up on that. And you see that? So Moses rose up in the morning and he built a voodoo altar. Let's go. Keep going. Under the hill and 12 pillars, mm -hmm. according to the 12 tribes of Israel. Uh -huh. Keep going. And he sent young men of the children of Israel. Okay which offered burnt offerings uh -huh, birth offerings, and sacrificed peace offerings of Sacrifice oxen unto the Lord. Oxen. Do you see the oxen being sacrificed right here? Do you see that? Get close up on that. Keep reading. And Moses took half of the blood and put it in basin. Stop. Look at the basin. Put it back on there. Look at the basin. That's a basin. Of, see that? Mm. It's a basin. Woo-wee. Got him. Keep going. The Bible is speaking since we're going to make the Bible speak. Keep going. And half of the blood he sprinkled. Half of the blood he sprinkled, keep altar. going. And he took the book. He took the book. Of the covenant. Uh -huh. And read in the audience okay. of the people. Okay. And they said, all that the Lord has said we will do mm -hmm. and be obedient. Mm -hmm. And Moses took the blood uh -huh. and sprinkled it on the people. So, okay, Moses sprinkled the blood. If you, if you try to escape and say, well, Christianity, well, Christianity, they do what? They drink the blood, don't mm -hmm. they? We That's drink the blood do. of Christ. It's called the what? Uh, the longest day at church we used to hate going on that uh, Sunday is called communion. the communion. Here communion. you go. <laughs> Voodoo system. Ring the blood. So now yeah. we got the Old Testament and the New Testament, right, participating in a voodoo system. So do not tell me that they have not stolen these cultural practices from Africa. Yeah. And that's called checkmate. Let the Bible speak. That's for you, uh, Bible For all y'all to talk about the black atheists, we're going to let the Bible speak. Right, right. right. Yeah. Right. right. I mean, let your homies oh, make that damn from each other. What Jerry got something to say? You got out. Go ahead, Jerry. Go ahead. I mean, as, as, far as, if, as far as religion goes, you know, I believe that um, religion is the the highest form of, of mind control because you, mm -hmm. you have, you have, you know, you have, um, what are the guy? Uh, you have the Mormons. Right. You have the Christians, right. you have um, uh, Buddhisms, mm -hmm. you have Scientologists, you have um, Muslims. Right. I mean, you have all these different other religions and stuff. Okay. But religion was, was birth to control the government, mm. okay? Because they control our people. Christians, we, we, we take communion the first time, uh, the first Sunday of the month, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, Muslims... 
they do a they do another ritual, you know, they, they do the Ramadan where they sit and out in front and they you know they worship the god or whatever. Buddhisms, they do um, you know, they do more of meditation. Okay. You know, and, and uh, the Mormons they go from door to door. Okay. Okay. Um, now religion is really just a way of of controlling the ways of, of life. You why, know, why would they want to do a thing like that, D? It's, it's, it's control, it's mind control. Okay. It's mind control. Now, if you don't, if, if you believe in God, you believe in good. If you believe in Lucifer, you believe in bad. <laughs> so if you believe in God, you believe in good. So they want you to believe in God. Mm -hmm. But religion, there, there really is no, there, there is no, religion is not real. You know, it's real, but God is not real, you know? <laughs> God is just a way of controlling society in the way that we think. The king of the black atheists have just deemed his nephew <laughs> an atheist. Yes. <laughs> no. I want to say this. Yeah, because I, I, I agree to an extent and then disagree. Oh, Religion man. is real and God is as real as you make them. Ooh. One, of the, one, of the, one of the things is why their religion is very real is because the programs that follow their religion. One of the things that Africans, the first, the first is how we're taught to view our religions. Mm. And every, all of us look at our religions from a subjective position. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like I've said before on the show, right. as a Christian, you're taught that long suffrage, long suffrage is piety. Mm. That being poor Muslim, is the man. righteous Muslim too. African Muslim. Piety. African Muslim, African Christian, you're taught that the suffering, poverty, giving away all your means, having things in this world is not good for the soul. But when you're a people, when you're from the people who originated this, these religions, you benefit from what their, what their God gives them. And, right. and that's what makes their religion very well. And Islam is incumbent upon every Muslim, I don't care what color you are, to make your pilgrimage once a year. Do you understand the economical value that brings mm. to Saudi Arabia Ooh. once that year? You look at the, mm. so we look at why was religion formed? Religion was the first forms of government. You know what I'm saying? Right, and after right. governments, when government, when religions start playing out, religions had to go to more of a psychological control. Right. So the people who were getting paid off religion had to find the new dupes. So we were taught to understand religion differently the way they, that the way they understand. So that God is very real. Look at Christmas. We, our failure is to uh, take our so-called spiritually spirituality or our theological life and translate it into practical forms. Case in point, look at uh, Christmas and the Christians. It is a billion dollar of a year That's right. commercialized day. Based around the sun. We talked about That's that. Right. Exactly. Winter solstice. It's, right. Exactly. Right. Now we have finally we had uh in Kringa and Kringa oh, come, up a, uh, come up with a come up with a a so called holiday called Kwanzaa. Like that. And, right. and there again, there again, even though it could have been something good, we've allowed the commercial and economical aspects to be given to other people. Right, now you got white people. So, so get that caller. Get that call. Yeah, let's get that call. Caller? Good point, y'all. Hello? Can you hear me? Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah, we hear you. Hello? Yeah, we hear you. What's going on, man? What's up? What's up, Westside? What's going on, man? <laughs> okay. I heard you guys speaking about uh the communion. The what? Community? Okay. Biblically, biblically, there is nothing in the Bible that says you take communion on the first Okay. Third or fourth Sunday. All right, we okay. agree. Keep going. The the Bible says that we take should take the Passover. Okay. Okay. Got which is comes around once a year on the fourteenth day of the month of Bill but nice. Can you explain the Passover to us, please, in case we don't know? Explain that to us. Let me show you so how that crazy it is. I think you gotta explain that because I don't think you can hear us. Passover is. Oh, oh, never mind. Okay. When you take the bread and the wine, brother, you have to not watch, not listen to yourself on TV. That's why we're getting the delay. Don't listen to yourself on the television. Turn down your television. Talk to us over the okay. phone. Okay. Oh. Thank you. Yes, sir. Okay, well, Passover is when you take the bread and the wine, which is symbolic of the body of Jesus and the blood of Jesus, which is the new covenant. Okay. Okay, the new covenant. Which they was, do, which they was doing in, in, in Egypt. I mean, which they was doing, Israelites were doing in the Old Testament way before Christ came on the scene. 
All right, hold on. Can we hold on for a minute? Can I explain? So that is so we now when you. they took the actual Passover lamb. We got you, brother. Uh, I was raised in the Jewish community. The Passover is when God, right, say, put this sign, this blood on your door, mm -hmm. saying that you worship God, That's right. Yahweh, Yahweh, or Yahoo, the energy drink. That's right. Right? And the angel of death will pass by your door. So, really, the Passover is talking about black African children being murdered black at the males. hands of Yahweh black because they did not precise. believe that. They did not believe in the God of Israel. They believe in Amun Ra, Onunkulun, yeah, mm -hmm. African ideas and concepts. And so, the Passover represents for those who are thinking the wholesale murder of African children, mm. the firstborn. That's what the Passover means to me, bro. Wow. Because wow. you sure wasn't an Israelite, you was an Egyptian. You're a Hamite. That's what they say, although we're not Ham. But according to the Biblios or the Babel, Ham is the Southerners, Black Africans, and mm -hmm. so your, your your wholesale ritual murder of African children, which are the Egyptians. So see, yo, you're conquered by religion. I feel you though, bro, but you're conquered. Conquered by religion. Yeah, you conquered. Yo, go go check that. Go read your Bible. Yo, it tells you the Egyptians are from the seed of Ham. You're not an Israelite because you're not a Semitic dude. You're a black dude. Mm -hmm. Probably come from West Africa. <laughs> yeah. Bikini Basso somewhere. Mm -hmm. See, so mm -hmm. you know it's deep. That thing deep, and I'm glad you brought that up because we. Boom. Checkmate. That's, yeah. called checkmate. That's called checkmate. That's what it's called. It's called checkmate. Yeah. So, the, so, so the government. I want to ask y'all. You, you, you do, you do believe that the government was built off of religion? No, 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 no. Government was built off of voodoo. Yeah. See, the first governmental systems you find in Africa. Okay. Wait, 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 which Go government ahead. are we talking about? Okay, but but on the on the back of the dollar. Mm -hmm. You see, you see, you see the pyramid, the African pyramid, symbol. which is in Egypt. African you see, symbol. you see the eye, which is the eye of Horus, mm -hmm. and African then, symbol. and then you see the 1776, mm -hmm. which, which is the New World Order, mm -hmm. and then it says, "In God We Trust." Mm -hmm. So, okay. the government was built off of religion. Every, every, everywhere that we go, every country that we go, is something about religion. All, every time that we get in a war, we get in the wars, supposedly, we get in a war because the Muslims, you know, uh, we're, we're not in their religion, you know? It's, it's no, black son of them, they got me on that. It's this all, government wasn't yeah, built off of religion, religion, was it? Right, no, it wasn't. It wasn't. I'm going to let you take that, because I know, it's, yeah. it's, 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 it's all, but see, what we got to understand, it's all psychological warfare and cultism. You know what I'm saying? One of the things is, they say we got to call us, or do I hold oh, no. for a call? Okay. Uh, no, no, go ahead. Okay. Well, one, of the, one, of the, one of the things, we got psychological war, warfare and cultism. I don't care. You can take an emblem, but it doesn't. They may take something, and it's just like okay, you know, like we're talking about street tribes, red and blue bandanas. That's right. You know what I'm saying? That's all they are. They're just bandanas. You can go to Walmart and get any red and blue bandana. <laughs> you can. But when you talk to anybody in the street tribe, when they get that bandana and they go through certain rituals and certain understanding, That's it right. no longer becomes a bandana. It becomes a symbol of what they represent. So it's the dust. So we may see the pyramid. Ah, oh, this is you know came from Africa. It's on the back of so they're African, isn't that? But to them, it has a whole different sy symbology, mm -hmm. a whole different meaning, mm -hmm. and a whole different understanding. So a symbol is one thing. Mm -hmm. My thing is saying this: that's how we get caught in religiosity. Mm -hmm. That's how they get us. You know what I'm saying? Right. We see, uh, like they told me. You know, my father used to say, you know, I, my father's a Muslim. Go well, Muslim. He used to tell me with the cross on thing. He said, the only place you see a cross is a graveyard. Right. That's you know what right. I'm saying? So that meant people were dead from the neck up. So every time I used to see a cross, <laughs> that's what I understood. Yeah. But when the Christian saw a cross, he understood something different. Resurrection. Same, right. same symbol. So we can't get caught up in the symbology and the emblems of it. You know what I'm saying? All of that is just to galvanize you, the people you know and have something to have you know people gather deep, around. He, you want to take that call at all? Yeah, let's take yeah. the call real quick. Huh? And we're going to be next. Caller? Caller. You're on. Caller. The yes, the brother was talking about the, the brother was talking about being from the seed of Ham. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Before that was a before that was a ham sham and the J fat, there was no such thing as a Hamite or African. What was Adam? What was Enoch? What was Methuselah? And all these guys. The name Africa didn't come until Scipio Africanus come in and conquered the land. Hold on, hold on. First of all, Scipio Africanus, so we, bro. We, we talking about Hamitic and Shemitic and all these things. Hold on, brother. Hold on, hold on. Turn my mic down a little bit. First of all, the, the word Africa, right, comes from some Romans, right, that, that, that was looking at a tribe, the Afrique tribe, okay? Mm -hmm. And so the Romans placed that name on that province. And so Leo Africanus, he defeated Hannibal. And so in Roman culture, whenever you defeat a certain nation, you take on their name. So, I mean, that name predates Leo Africanus. That's called checkmate again. Do your research, brother. Mm. Do your research. Now, what was that? It sure wasn't, what did he say? Uh, 
Lodge. No, you start mentioning the names. These characters are mythological characters. Okay? We're not Ham for real. We're not Adam, because Adam, the root of Adam means red and ruddy. We're not red and ruddy people. Mm -hmm. Okay? We're, we're original people. And we originated in Africa, Lake Rift, Oba River, Tanzania. Okay? Lake Rift, look it up for yourself. And so we don't know what in the world we was called three million years ago. We have no idea. But for sure, black people do not originate in the Bible. I just wanted to make that point. This right here. Elements, he's yeah, right. Elements, Charlie. Element Charlie. Yeah, I know it's kind of fady there on the camera, but yeah, we come from this we right here. We come from here, the element, Charlie. But we come, and the element chart simply represents the forces in nature, voodoo again. That's right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, it's, voodoo, so bro. Gotta, yeah, it's kind of faded, right. but yeah, that's the el periodic elemental chart yeah, that's right where there. we come from, elements out the ground. That's right. That's right. True. Mm -hmm. Read less of that. You need to read less of that Bible and more of these goddamn periodic yeah, elemental charts right there. Right. It's amazing how we take our whole story back to the Bible like that was some deep book. So right. the question I like to ask all y'all Bible people, and you think the Bible speak, right? My question is, give me one groundbreaking idea that you find in the Bible that no other culture has. And without Ooh. that groundbreaking idea, the whole world wouldn't be where it is today. Mm. I'm waiting for that. Most, most Bibles anyway, like the Quran and the Bible and, um, you know, Torah. different other books, they all lead back to the same thing. Right. You know, they all have the same storylines in them. You know, they all have Jesus, you know, most of them, except yep. for like Buddhism and what? stuff like that. Did he say Jesus? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, here we go again. Let's go back to Africa. You can't get away from it. Mm -hmm. Everybody do a little bit of study, and I know the young gun, though. When you talk about Jesus, that character come from who? Horus. Horus. Okay, according to this book, Dynastic, right? Pre-Dynastic, before the unification, it talks about the tribe of Horus, right? Mm -hmm. And it talks about that Horus came down, right, with a staff. Okay, that staff was iron. So Horse was really talking about those technically sound Africans who had higher technology of iron smoking 24,000 years ago, 36,000 years ago. Okay, so, so, so how does a Horus people with iron later on become someone's religion? Because you can read this Star Deep Beginnings, right? And that chapter two is entitled, let me get this title real fast. It's called The Followers of Horus, right? It says the followers of Horus, 40,000 years of African mining and metal technology. Because last week I was challenging, well, we're not going to deal with technology. Well, voodoo is the technology of the Africans. Metal smoking. That only thing, my question to Unc is, now we're talking about centralized and decentralized governments. Now, right. what America does, they go into every nation. That's right, Shane. And they show where most of your nation's are centralized governments, and then they show the complexity of America's, which is decentralized. And first thing that the rebels scream is, oh, democracy, democracy, is they do it all around the world. Mm -hmm. So how do we as African people defeat that system? Because it's complex and it's, it, it's, it's very well, palatable. Well, you know, hold on, I'm gonna let you do this one, Black, because these are our favorite people right here. We talking about democracy, dude. Right. Right, and the question is, how did democracy defeat that system? On page 212. Okay. Okay. It says, this is how they defeated that system. <laughs> it says, but since the Masi themselves were great traders, they needed a far flung outlet uh, which the Muslims everywhere controlled. See, back then the Muslims controlled that, right? Mm -hmm. It says, Muslim <coughs> traders were therefore admitted into the country under strict supervision of the Ministry of the Muslims. Okay, so how do African nations deal with that? Stop letting them in. It says, all Muslim activity was restricted to trade, meaning you can't build no mosques here, okay? Mm -hmm. These people were voodoo. They had their own custom and traditions. They was atheists, black atheists, yeah, right? Anti-white God. Yeah. It says, the religion of Islam was rejected. Conversion to both teachings and religion was forbidden, okay? It says, in short, the Masi saw Islam and Christianity as the white man's vehicle of conquest. It was the only black nation in time to see this indeed, the Masi prophecy, right, that when her, the Masi prophecy held that when the first white man appeared into the land, the nation would die. Wait a minute. You mean we have the ability to make up prophecy? And, and the prophecy was when the first white man in the land, see, Islam, tell me if I'm right or wrong, you can't make no more books to the Quran, can you? Mm -hmm. Ain't no more prophets, is it? <clears throat> no. Over with, bingo. You right. can't add no more Jesus Christ, can you? Can't add no more books to the Bible. They say the lost books of the Bible. Ain't nobody accepting that. 
right? And so the voodoo system allows you to study the past and, and, and make a new system. See, we got these young brothers right here. Y'all got to show these young brothers. Got these strong warriors right here, okay? Y'all got to come up here real fast. These strong young warriors right here, right? They're going to have to start developing a new system, right, to fight the oppression. That's called voodoo. They can't add to Christianity no more. They won't allow them to add to Islam or Judaism. They out of that. So they got to make their own system of equality amongst themselves. They got to understand African culture. Well, let me ask you, Yang, the same question. You know, democracy is so, it's so palatable. It sounds so nice. How do we defeat that, Yang? Do we come up with another? I don't think, to me right? personally, I don't, you know, I, I, I'm still a big advocate of democracy. I believe that the people should have the choice to pick their leaderships. Okay. I believe the, uh, and I believe in the power of the people. I believe in the power of the vote. Now, okay. if the people who represent democracy are immoral, are corrupt, are corrupt the if, if, right, right, the administration, if the people allow for corrupt administrations to be put in place, then that's on the people. African people, African American, especially descendants of Africa here in America, have to realize we have to get past like what Ankh shows us and, and what, when we work with the young homies, what we're teaching them is European thinking, European ideology. There's nothing wrong with African nationalism. There's nothing wrong with being dis discriminative against where you shop, where you buy. That's right. You know what I'm saying? If you don't look like me, I didn't buy from there. There's nothing wrong with uh -huh. that. But a world who you will have people teach you that, but you don't, we're not looking at the position that they're looking at it from. Right. Like someone asked me the question, I'll be brief. They asked me, is nationalist, white nationalism the same as black nationalism? Yeah, no. So and that's what I said. I said, if you look it up, Clinically, or, or from a Webster's point of view or whatever, the definition may read the same, but if you're looking at it from the viewpoint of the person who's, who's practicing it, it isn't. White nationalism is to maintain the status quo, to maintain a white supremacist power structure. Black nationalism is telling us that we're trying to fight for our empowerment and liberation, to galvanize our resources. We're the only people that you can move into our communities and get everything out of our community, get rich off of us, and we still lagging behind. Yang, you, you, you go against the destruction of black civilization. You go against the Masi prophecy. What's that? Because the white people practice democracy, right? Don't they? Yeah, but what are we gonna practice? Oh no, wait a minute. They yeah. practice, right? Absolutely. And so when you let that in, you've broken the prophecy and we done. Well, the hold on, let me man, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on for a minute. Let me give you, because it's five, it's 5,000 years of the record now. Right. Watch this, it say, that time had not yet arrived. The prophecy of excluding whites or rigidly limiting their numbers and controlling their activities in your brain and your mind, right? It say, and the country further eliminates an African experience that is already so clear, right, that it should require no additional light. All African states that begin to develop again after the Great Dispersion, right, rebuilding and expanding, were prosperous and advancing as black states as long as they borrowed the relentless, aggressive whites from their country. And their destruction, watch this, and their destruction became certain only when they took democracy. You know, I added it in there, right? Yeah. <laughs> right? But what was hold on, hold on, hold on. When they abandoned the policy and let the Asians and the Europeans in. On this, the record is entirely clear. The Masses, the Masi held on steadfastly to their own African religion and African institutions and survived over 500 years into the 20th century until they finally got overran by France. So, so, so they didn't do the democracy thing, and they lasted for 500 years. But nobody's telling me what I just did. I just did. I gave you. But, but that means Chancellor Williams broke his own rule because he said, this is a commission for spiritual life and assistance. This should be the racist great commission. It, its major task would be, number one, to determine the direction of a civilization. Two, to interpret the spiritual as men and women working on the highest level of human endeavors to understand the meaning of life while trying to improve. Three, to enlist cooperation of white, brown, yellow, red, and any other people of goodwill in all out drive to a better world. Let's so he put that broke to the his test, own. Though. Let's put that to the test. Does that okay. make sense? No, no, but that's Chancellor Williams. That's my right. So, so right, so, right. So, so he broke. Right. So you, you get you jump. Right. Well, okay. Nobody's explaining to me though what because I can hear all the red, but what you know what yeah, form? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what form of government? What form of government are you going to use? Because I mean, people I are not oh, going to go back. I just said voodoo. What, what government is voodoo? So let's sit down and let's create one. That's voodoo. It's simply energy. Come on, let's get but, this right. right simply, but simply would, it not be, would it not be a democracy? Anywhere that the people have a no, vote. No, they had a mix. They had a, hold on, wait. Would I, I get what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, but, 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 yeah, I think what Yang is saying I get what Yang is saying. Is that as long as you know me. I'm going to give you the other. I know. Throw right. baby out with the bad boy. Right, right. right. Just because right. Europeans use democracy doesn't mean we shouldn't be a democracy. Hold on, hold on, wait, hold on, hold on. Yeah, we're going. Oh, okay, okay. We're good. No, no, I thought. Good. Here we go. Look, let's come to what the Akan do. 
right? We, remember I talked about the dual uh, sex system? Mm -hmm. Right. It says the system of feminine stool holdings extend from the highest levels of the state. Manifested, right, the Omana herself, who together with the Omana, the king, constitute the monarchy down to the level of village organizations, right? Every village head, the Akotu, has his counterpart in the village level, Queen Mother, also called the Omona. She stands to him in the exact same relationship as Omana to the king. It's right. a every office of the can political hierarchy, right, in all its variants, has a female and male counterpart. So we'll start with that first. Okay, we'll start with that. We'll start with that know. having a governing system Syndrome. where well, you have male, male and female equality in there. Right. We'll start because how Okay, go ahead, Yang. Because my thing is, how are they elected? When we use the word money, like oh, you said, we're going to have oh, this brain. Council. Because you get right. Council how are they elected? Do we want people born in divinity? Do we want right, people right. born in a rulership position? As far as being in a village, in my council, you know, does an elder just automatically make him the leader? Or nope. do we, do we have the Jay. right to vote for the people that we want to represent us? And to my you understanding, see. that's a democracy. Right, right, right. right. And, and Yang, and, and I'm going to say this Demon. because Democracy. Demon. these organizations I just read yeah. with the Mexicans, now, now I'm talking about cultural unity, with the Mexicans, with the Asians, with the Crips, that's all black, and Bloods are all black, they have a decentralized government. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, yeah. so that's right, that's a democracy. So, so, so um, you got to admit, man, they that's stole a lot of this stuff from us, right? Yeah, they took but a lot of it. Yeah, yeah, it's it's I just said it. Remember okay. I said at the beginning of the show? I said that all systems... That's religion, that's government. All okay. these systems have borrowed fragments from the peripheral of African voodoo system, which is simply African civilized system. The oldest civilizations on the planet start out in Africa. Am I not right or wrong? Yes. Okay, so, so what, what, what I think me and Yang is trying to say is that democracy on paper is good for it. I just, it's the, I, I'm thinking it's okay. the administration so, that corrupts. So this is what we do. I think it's white people, straight up. Hey, you know what? And, you and, know what and so y'all still want to separate the system from the people. No, no, like, no, no. How no, do we no, judge no, Christianity? No, no. We judge Christianity by the people. You can't judge the system. No, I, I, you know what? I wish we, we did. If, this. if we judge Christianity by the people, then a lot nope. less people, then a lot less black people would be Christians off the actions based on the Ku Klux Klan. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. So we don't Hitler judge. was a Christian. Yeah. See? But yeah. Malcolm was a Muslim. Yeah. And so it's kind of And, he hold on, and right. Malcolm is my man, and yeah. I know it's like kind of, but he wasn't totally clear. Because he was still kind of stuck. And then he seen that Islam got a little shaky mm -hmm. when the minister kind of did some things. And Malcolm was and like, that's wow. Why, and that's wow. why he turned to black nationalism. He got kicked out and Khalid Mohammed turned to black nationalism. Well, and he got kicked hold out. Hold on. So, what, what was the number one quality of Malcolm, though, that even FBI said? His moral and ethic uh, standard. That's his right. standard of voodoo. Yeah. His mayat. Because out of the voodoo system comes your mayat. Mm -hmm. Like the Neturu in, in, in Egypt ain't number to your reach. It's the same thing. His system of understanding his right. his moral y'all know morality came right, in right. Before but what, what, God, know, but we gotta that. say we gotta say but this is what i'm saying this is why i talk about a, yeah, yeah this is why i talk up. about yeah. a strong yeah. program yeah, yeah we wrap right. hey, up next week we start with this. we gonna deal with guess what we're gonna deal with julian assange they gave him asylum so american britain they trying oh, to straight up disrespect no no but this is good though it's good yo yo next week we gonna deal with that so Oh, and can I add, hold on. Yes, please. yes, please. Can please. I just add next week, right? Yeah. Because y'all talking like about socialism and right. democracy. And we're going to talk about the Africans that thought they got free back in the 1940s and 50s. And we're going to see how well they doing yeah, in 2012. We're going to see that. Okay, I want to throw this in there too yes. while we wrapping up. God is the star of the show. Saturdays, mm -hmm. I said it myself right out of the pool. Black atheist, black atheist. People made up religion. God is.